Ah oh, yeah, it's that time of year folks, and that means it's time for the top 10 best games of 2016. Let's do this. So kicking off this list was actually a pretty big surprise for me. I thought it was just going to be another big disappointment from EA, but it did not disappoint. It was actually pretty fun and a really nice fresh breath air from the franchise. That goes out to Battlefield 1. This is what the franchise needed. They needed a fresh new setting set placed back in World War I. Had a really awesome multiplayer. The maps were awesome. The single player was pretty good too. Granted, it could have been a bit longer. It's really, really short. There's not really a whole lot of missions you can do, but it was pretty good nonetheless. But the multiplayer, of course, for Battlefield is where it's at, where it's always going to be at. Fails to not disappoint. Multiplayer is amazing, guys. Plus, yeah, I just love the destructive capability you can do. Almost any match you go into is just chaos of explosions and shooting and just all this crazy shit happening constantly. And plus, I love when those big blimps come up and just start tearing stuff apart. And if you manage to take it out, it's so cool to see the whole thing explode. And explosions in this game are amazing, by the way. And when it just crashes down onto the map, and that debris from the blimp is still left on the map everywhere where it's almost like a whole brand new map where you have all this debris that you can use as cover and whatnot. I love it. So really EA, thank you for listening to the fans, giving us a setting that we all wanted, and of course not releasing a shitty buggy mess when it released. I have to commend them for that. So, so great job DICE and EA. And yeah, that sounds crazy, but I mean it. <laughs> Now next is something that a lot of people have hyped this year, which to no surprise, it was one of the most hyped games, most play games of this entire year, and it basically created a whole new franchise within of itself within the cosplay community. A lot of you guys already know what I'm talking about, but I'll just go ahead and say it anyway, with Overwatch. So this was a pretty big surprise for me. I wasn't really too interested in it when it first came out because I was like, it's just a glorified first person shooter really. But then I got into it, I couldn't stop playing it. I was really surprised. The character classes are unique and interesting. I love all of their unique abilities. The weapons are badass, and I just love the way the game looks, really. It's like this unique style. It's, it's a very unique artistic style to it. Very interesting. And I really like how if one character has a certain ability, that can affect another character with a different type of ability. So when they start going at it, the way the combat works is it's almost like it's intertwined with each other, if you will. So if one character has a shield attack, another person has a, it's a different type of attack, it coincides with each other and the gameplay is just really fluent. Overall, the multiplayer just completely killed it. I totally understand the hype, even though this game was hyped all to hell. But this basically created a franchise in and of itself, which more than likely we're going to see a couple sequels out of this thing, which I'm really excited to see. So. Congrats to the developers, the multiplayer is really awesome. Keep it up. Alright, time for the fanboy me to come out. So, <laughs> I actually did a review of the first game that released last year, and I was really surprised they came out with the sequel this year. And they basically listened to every single solitary complaint that we have. I have to commend the developers for that. So that, of course, is Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Again, it's still crazy how fast this game came out because fans were begging for a sequel and they went ahead and released it really fast. I was, not gonna lie, I was a little bit skeptical at first because of how fast it was releasing. Actually playing it though, it's basically what the first game should have been. It's pretty much everything about Xenoverse 1, but improved. I'm not sure where to begin with all the improvements, so I'll just go ahead and start with the hub world. In the first game, it was very bland. You could only go within certain areas of the hub world. Every single time you would go to another section of the hub world, you'd be stuck in this loading screen. And also, a lot of people complained about being able to run way too slowly, really took away from the experience. Because when you're playing this epic quest, you're flying around, tearing it up, and then you go into this hub world and then you run this 
game, however, completely different new system. So pretty early on in the game, you get like this little hoverboard, which helps you move along faster. And eventually, after you get through about halfway through the game's main quest line, you actually can fly around the hub world, which of course is what 90% of players are gonna do anyway. <laughs> There's way more attacks to choose from, way more parallel quests, even though I felt like they did use some parallel quests from the previous game and poured it into this game. In fact, uh, quite a bit of few of them felt like that, and there were a lot of quests that felt similar. This one, however, just improved upon the gameplay. The attacks feel way more smooth. There's a lot more variety in terms of the major attacks, ultimate attacks, plus all the different races in the game, which by the way, there's a lot more races to choose from as well. They feel really diverse. In the first game, they felt pretty similar for the most part. Um, um, the only really major change that I felt like you were given were their statistics from the beginning. So Saiyans had less health, but their attack power was stronger, Namek's vice versa. This game, however, it's way more diverse than that. Each different type of race plays completely different, which I really like. I just beat the game playing through as a Saiyan. I want to play through the game a second time and play as a Namekian. The story, although I don't really think it's as good as the first one, it's pretty excusable because the gameplay itself, super fun, I'm telling you. Another thing they really improved on from the first game is customization. For example, the small things that we complain about, they fixed in this one. In the first game, when you wanted to buy a piece of clothing item, it would just give you a general description without really describing what it looked like. You didn't even give it a preview image of what it actually looked like. This game totally addresses that, and plus, not only do you get to see what it looks like before you buy it, there's way more options to choose from, which I love. Way more teachers you get to choose from, which give you really badass attacks. Way more quests, the story is much longer. I mean, really, Xenoverse 2 is just a bigger and better game than Xenoverse 1, and that's exactly what I asked for. It's exactly what I got. So thank you, Dims. This is exactly what I wanted, and I'm gonna play this game for probably a lot more months to come. Oh, thank you guys for not making this a disappointing mess at release. You listened to our complaints, and then you fixed it. That's pretty much what has been happening throughout this whole list, which I mean, I have to give credit where credit is due for these developers because they create a first game from the get-go. It's meh, they have a lot of problems with it, but then they fix it upon the sequel and they make the sequel really fun. This game, no different. Watch Dogs 2. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This game is super fun. A lot of people that are saying this is disappointing are just going on the bandwagon from the first game saying, oh, what's the Ubisoft? They're making a boring, repetitive, uh, buggy mess game when it releases. Why would anyone play this? No, this game totally improves upon the first. Let me explain why. I first want to address the gameplay. When this game was released, was it perfect? No. There were a few glitches and bugs here and there, nowhere near as much as the first game had. Nowhere near as much. It actually felt like I was playing a completed game, which we should be getting in the first place, but I'm glad they made sure this game was solid before they released it. Again, it wasn't perfect, but really any major big game like this that you can free roam around a huge city is to be expected, so it's not that big a deal. The combat heavily improved. I feel like it was a lot more smooth, and plus you play as a different character this time around, which was a lot more interesting than Aiden Pierce from the first game. Now you play as Marcus. I feel like he's a lot more likable character. He's also just way more fun to play as. He's way more smooth when he's doing his parkour combat. He's a lot more cooler gadgets to play around with. Like for example, you have this drone that you can set up in the air and you can upgrade it to attack enemies or just spy on enemies and you can hack enemies from the air. I thought that was really cool. And the story, I liked a hell of a lot more in this game. I also really like the lighter tone in this game. It, kind of is leaning more towards the same thrill game with like craziness and silliness and stuff. But that's not really a bad game because what the first game tried to do was they tried to make it this serious, dark, gritty type game, but it just came across as boring. So Ubisoft totally did a 180 on that, where it almost feels like the opposite. I mean, sure, this game does have its serious and sad moments here and there, but it also has some really, really funny ones in there as well, which I love. There's also a lot of side quests you can undergo, which you can hack in. Not gonna lie, this one quest made me laugh my ass off. 
there's a side mission where you hack into this guy's apartment and he's actually a swatter. He's threatening to swat some people and you actually hack into him and then you send cops to his apartment instead. That's basically Ubisoft giving the middle finger to swatters everywhere. I love little details like that. Whoever designed this game, they really understood how the modern internet worked. They were saying a lot of modern terms people were saying. The characters were a lot more interesting. I loved the characters. They were super hilarious and I really did feel like that I was in this hacking group of friends, hanging out with them, pulling off crazy stuff. I loved it. The missions were a lot more fun because you get to go to certain places that are really detailed and you hack into these big corporations and expose them. I just love that stuff. So overall, this was a thousand times better than the first game. I definitely recommend it to anyone if you're just a free roaming game fan. If you love just fun games, if you love games like GTA, which this game is really similar to GTA, not only really a bad thing, but again, if you love games like this, I absolutely recommend picking it up. Trust me, you're not gonna be disappointed. And finally, after a really long wait, we got Deus Ex Mankind Divided. And not gonna lie, I was already expecting this game to be really good because I really enjoyed Human Revolution. I thought that was an incredible game. When this was released, it's pretty much Human Revolution, but improved. The combat is way better. The story, you really have to understand it because there's a lot of story elements within the game. They do offer, however, this little pre-story that you can watch before you start playing the game, which it's still a lot to absorb, so I definitely recommend you watch that first before playing this. Otherwise, you won't understand what the hell is happening. But I really do like how this game basically makes everything feel like it's at stake. Like, the entire world is at stake. Everyone with augmentations is at stake. But by far, my favorite thing about this game is the combat. I love how you can approach any mission you want in a variety of ways. Stealth, guns blazing, however you want to do it, I just love it. And plus, the levels in this game were way more open. That was a big complaint from the last game, Human Revolution, where it was really linear. This one, the levels are a lot more open. There's a lot more hub rolls where you can go around and explore. I love that stuff. So just like pretty much every other game on this list so far, it's basically the game before it, but vastly improved. Again, not a bad thing, a great thing. So I'm gonna play this game for probably a lot more as well. And let me tell you guys, the hardest difficulty in this game really is super hard. So if you love games with a big challenge, up this game to the hard difficulty. Trust me, that's all I'm gonna say. I was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for this game. They showed gameplay of it during E3 one year. I was stoked. I got tired of waiting. They kept delaying it. But it was not a disappointment when it came out. It was so worth the wait. Doom. Yes. Yes. Doom in a nutshell is basically the first Doom, but better graphics. That is nowhere at all a bad thing. I mean, this may just seem like a standard first-person shooter, but this game mostly appealed to people like me and other people in my generation who played the first game and Doom 2 and 3 as well when they were released. This is really a callback to us, and we absolutely loved it. Pretty much a lot of my friends that are around the same age as me that have played the original Doom games absolutely love this. As the game goes on, it gets way more fast paced. It's just non-stop. This game will kick your ass up until the very end. Heart pounding action, I'm telling you. Glorified violence in this game as well. That's a big thing about Doom that of course caused a lot of controversy, but hey, that's what Doom is all about. So much awesome violence in this game, like up in your face. This game doesn't sugarcoat it. It's, we're gonna tear these demons apart and throw blood right in your face. I love that shit. I mean, this game moves super quick. The 60 frames per second just makes this game shine. I mean, it needs 60 frames with a game like this. And the graphics are just mind-boggling good. I mean, how can a game look this good and run at 60 frames is beyond me. But they did an incredible job with this. If you want to play a game that'll kick your ass and keep your heart racing and like a crazy roller coaster ride throughout the end, definitely pick this one up. And yet another sequel that is leagues better than the first one, which I was super excited to play, no doubt had high hopes for it, and it did not fail to deliver. 
That goes out to Dishonored 2. First game was awesome. I felt like it was one of the best games of the year when it was released. This game is no different. They knew that there was going to be a lot of high expectations going into this one. They didn't fail to deliver. I actually enjoyed the story in this game way more than the previous one. The characters also seemed a lot more relatable. You also feel like a lot more was at stake. Like if you don't assassinate this guy, all hell is going to break loose. You really do feel like that everything is pending on you, and I love that. But of course, my favorite thing about the game, of course, is the huge open missions. There are literally dozens of ways you can approach these missions. There's dozens of paths that you can go to to try to get your target. I just love the fact that you have the option to not needing to kill a single person throughout the whole game. You can complete the whole game without killing one person if you want. Or you can kill everybody in the game if you want. It's up to you. That's one of my most favorite things about this game is choice. I mean, you have the choice to go in stealthily, you have the choice to go in and just murder everybody in sight, you have the choice to just try to avoid everybody without even touching anyone, you have the choice to go in like, a, like an assassin where you can try to navigate across rooftops and go through paths that wouldn't seem possible otherwise. I mean, hell, when I was playing these open missions and getting the choice to do however I wanted to go through them, I tried so many different ways and I didn't even try every single way because there's just so much variety in how you can complete these missions and I love that. So if you like games with that type of style, pick this one up absolutely. I don't really need to tell you guys otherwise because I'm certain that a lot of you are probably going to pick this up anyway, so, but definitely do that. It's awesome. Man, this is probably one of the longest delayed games, or probably the longest in production games I have ever seen, ever. I mean, time and time again, we were hearing about this game, it got delayed, we got a release date, then that got delayed, people got tired of waiting, and finally, finally, they were pushed to try to make this game, to make it release, because the fans demanded for it. And we finally got it to come out. A lot of you guys know what I'm talking about, but of course I'm talking about The Last Guardian. I mean, this game, it's totally unique. I haven't seen anything like this. How many other games are out there where you play as a kid and you have this giant beast helping you through really complicated puzzles? How many games like that exist? Off the top of my head, I can't really think of any. <laughs> this was definitely worth the wait, and I'll explain why. The puzzles in this game are very interesting. Some of them are complicated, and you really have to use your brain to try to get through them. And I don't know why. I just love the relationship between the little kid and this big beast. Just something about it makes it seem very compelling. We have this little insignificant kid, and then you have this gigantic intimidating beast trying to escape from these enemies out to kill you while also trying to get past through all these obstacles. Something about that is just really engaging and really unique. That's pretty much the main reason why I love this game is it's just such a breath of fresh air into the gaming industry where it's really hard to give this game a genre. Is it a puzzle game? Is it an adventure game? It's really hard to say. But when I first got my hands on this game, it was so hard for me to put it down. I just absolutely loved it from start to finish. It was definitely worth the wait. If you guys like puzzle games or high suspenseful games that are really get your heart racing, and trust me, this game has a lot of moments like that. If you think that this will game to appeal to you because of its unique style, pick this one up. Trust me, it's awesome. Coming in at number two was another game that got delayed so many times. Everybody was wondering if this was ever going to get released. It finally did, and it was awesome. That goes out to Final Fantasy XV. Now, real quick, I'm not the hugest. I'll go on record saying I'm not the hugest Final Fantasy fan. I played a few Final Fantasy games from here and there. You know, I played Final Fantasy VII, I played VIII, I played Thirteen. I played Lightning Returns, I played a lot of the recent ones, but this one really appealed to me just because they were trying to revamp the gameplay. And I thought it really worked really well. The best thing about this game, of course, is the gameplay, which is the most important thing in any game. The gameplay is so much fun. I'm telling you, I don't know why, just something about it 
it was so hard for me to not play this. There's a lot of really unique and interesting weapons throughout the game. A lot of awesome boss fights. I'm telling you, these boss fights are where it's at. You really have to strategize and really work out as a team to take these bosses down. You can't try to take these things down by yourself. It makes them 10 times more difficult. And also, I really like your teammates in this game. They each have their own unique personalities that you can all relate to. And I really just felt like I was being dived into this epic adventure. I also felt like a lot of stuff was at stake, and if you didn't try to resolve them, the world was pretty much fucked. Which leads me into the huge open world of this game. I loved it. I love the variety of it, I love the unique style because this is on a completely unique planet. So there's a lot of interesting creatures, there's a lot of interesting landscapes, there's a desert landscape, forest landscape, urban cities you get to explore. And the story, I mean, this is Square Enix, it's a Final Fantasy game, the story was awesome. Now, the ending, which I don't know if I'll make a separate video about or not, so let me know if you guys want me to make a video on that, because the ending of this game, I'm gonna go on record saying, uh, it sucks. <laughs> no spoilers, but the ending of this game, in my opinion, sucks. Also, probably about the second to last level of this game, I thought it was awful. It felt like a totally different developer designed that level. I don't know what they were thinking. I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a certain chapter in this game I thought was awful. I don't know what they were thinking. But putting that aside, I mean, that almost gets brushed off because you beat the game, you get to fruit on the world, and that is where it's at. And I love the unique attacks, so if you attack an enemy from behind, one of your teammates will jump in and do this unique attack and you take these guys out in badass ways. And you really do feel like a badass as you start upgrading your character, getting more skills. And because you are really greatly rewarded with going out and trying to attack enemies, it, it gave me an incentive to go after enemies that were more powerful than me. Not knowing if I was going to succeed, but I wanted to try anyway, just because I think the combat is that good. And I also thought that if you fought enemies that are at a much higher level than you, it really puts the stakes way higher and you really have to get your A game on. And I love that stuff. So overall, despite the ending, which I mean, I'll brush it aside because the gameplay is awesome, this game did not feel a disappoint. I loved it. I could see myself playing this game for months to come. I recommend this to everybody. I've already recommended it to all my friends. People that hate Final Fantasy that I know really want to get this game. And there's some people I know that hate Final Fantasy that bought the collector's edition of this game. That's how much it stands out and that shows. So if you guys, even if you guys hate Final Fantasy games, if you love free roll games, RPGs, good stories, if you can brush aside the shitty ending, you guys should just get this game for the gameplay. Enough said. So pick this one up, trust me, throughout the majority of this game, you will not be disappointed. It is fucking awesome. This is heartbreaking, but for a good reason. It's heartbreaking because I know this is going to be the last one they're making in this franchise, but they worked their absolute hardest on this. It really shows, and it's probably the best possible way to end this franchise. That, of course, goes out to Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. Man, Naughty Dog, how do you guys do this? I really thought that with Uncharted 2 and 3, you were at the pinnacle of how good these games can get. This one releases? Fucking awesome. This game was almo almost perfect. The story was probably my favorite out of all the Uncharted games because a lot was at stake this time around, and plus, I really liked how it showed a lot of flashbacks from Nathan's past up until how they coincide with events in the future. And his story is super relatable. Super relatable. That sounds crazy because he goes on all these crazy adventures and he's death defying acts and everything, but when things really start to get serious, they get really serious, they get really dramatic, and they get really sad. It felt like a lot of the people that wrote The Last of Us 
went to this game to help write it, which it wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. Because this game has a lot of humor, it's got a lot of jokes, but also has a lot of serious tones, some really sad moments, which I'm not going to lie, made me tear up a couple times, and that's really hard for a game to do, so I have to commend them for that. Gameplay is pretty much at its best. This combat's super fun. There's actually a lot more weapons, and there's also a lot more ways you can get around with trying to navigate through the world with climbing. Graphics is a huge bonus. This game looks the best out of all the other Uncharted games. It really shows that they try their absolute best to make this the best looking Uncharted game, and they totally pull it off. So the awesome gameplay, the pretty much perfect story, makes for a great, great package. It's a near-perfect game. I understand not everybody will have a PS4, but if you have a PS4, this is a must-buy. No questions asked. Trust me. Well, guys, that does it for my top 10 best games of 2016. Be sure to stay tuned for my video on my top 10 most disappointing games of 2016. And there were sure a lot, but I had to narrow it down to 10. <laughs> but be sure to let me know what your guys' top 10 best games of 2016 were. I love seeing your guys' opinions and love seeing the games that you enjoyed the play the most. And I'll be sure to see you guys next year for the top 10 best games of 2017. Until then, thanks for watching. If you want to see more, be sure to hit that like button. As always, be sure to subscribe. And let's all look forward to the badass gaming year of 2017. Yeah!